Today I've taken a break from splitting wood and uh, I'm taking you literally out behind the woodshed for a talking to about knife handle design. So to start what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some stupid hand tricks. It's like stupid pet tricks only for your hand. So and all of this becomes relevant um, when you talk about knife handle design so just bear with me. First majority of the strength in your grip uh, believe it or not, comes from your small finger and your ring finger. Uh, and the index and long finger also contribute, but I think the last paper I saw said about 60% comes from your small finger and ring finger. Um, a way you can test that is to take and hold the handle of a tool and ask somebody to pull it out if you're just holding it with your small and ring finger, and then with your index and middle finger. Um, there may or may not be a big difference, but the, the bulk of the strength in your grip comes from these two fingers. Here's another stupid hand trick. Say uh, you want to get this ha hammer out of my hand. The way you would do it is to flex my wrist and it'll, pr it'll practically almost fall out if you do that. The reason being that the uh, tendons are only so long and the muscles have an optimum length where they have the most force and if you put the wrist into flexion like this they just don't have the force of contraction that they do if it's in either the neutral position or slightly extended. Another stupid hand trick. Make a fist, now spread your fingers with your fist closed. You cannot do it unless there's something majorly wrong with your hand and the reason being is you have these muscles between the bones here, the metacarpal bones, called the palmar interossei. And what they do is they draw your index finger and your ring finger and your small finger towards your long finger, like that. And they contract uh, maximally when your hand is in a fist. So you can't spread your fingers uh, with your hand in a fist. One last stupid hand trick, it's actually more of a stupid hand uh, fact is that when your hand is in a closed fist there are no straight lines so where if you're gonna so if you're gonna grab this handle when you make a tight grip around there there's curves and there's a curve between this is your thenar eminence the thumb meat and the hypothenar eminence there's a curve when you close your fist between those there's also another curve where your fingers curl around and there's a natural curve there because the phalanges are different lengths and the metacarpals are different lengths so the bones start from different places and that forms a curve when your hand hits the handle of your knife or whatever tool you happen to be using. What I'm about to tell you about uh, knife handle design is relevant more towards knives that you're going to be doing heavy carving with or using all day long for a certain task. Um, I'm not talking about a knife like this. This is uh, made by uh, Jesse Hemphill and he mostly does Moran style knives but this was kind of a one-off uh, stock removal that he did. Um, he, this according to him was intended more as a like a neck knife than it, than it would be you know, like your heavy duty, I'm going to use this to carve and those sorts of things. And uh, I'll tell you why this would not be a good handle for that in just a minute. One good way to think about knife handle design is to go and get some knives from people who have to use their knives all day. So an example would be something that's used in the uh, meat packing industry. This I got from a sausage. Um, factory and they have to use these hard all day long and so they make the handle in shaped in such a way so that you're not going to develop uh, hot spots you're not going to drop the knife and it's very well made so that you can hold on to it and get a really good grip notice there's not much texturing to this grip at all another historically very awesome knife for uh, wood carving and things like that are these uh, Pauco style knives. This is a, I think it's a, yeah, it's a Kellum, a Kellum knife. 
and the handles on these styles of knives are usually just fantastic. And this, this one has a particularly good handle that I would consider almost ergonomically perfect for a uh, hard use, meaning you're going to be just working it all day long and you don't want to develop hot spots and those sorts of things. So what do I do when I'm designing a knife handle for a knife that's to be used hard, um, you know, big, heavy cutting tasks, and I want it to be usable all day long and you don't develop um, fatigue in your hand. Well, first I make sure that all of your, that the handle is long enough for all of your fingers to fit on the uh, handle. There are uh, some pretty excellent examples of three finger knives and even two and a half finger knives, but I would not use those as, uh, you know, my big all day long cutting knife. Uh, reason being, again, where does your grip strength come from? If you start dropping fingers off of there, it uh, you have less grip and less ability to hang on to stuff, and plus it's going to move more in your hand because you don't, I mean, there's not as much um, surface area for contact, and you're going to have less control of the knife and um, potentially develop some hot spots in the first web space and other places where there's movement. So to pick the length of your handle, just make it the length of your of your palm so that the knife fits very easily into your palm and has plenty to grip onto. For the up and down dimensions, uh, I think from having used lots and lots of knives and studied lots and lots of knives that the shortest uh, height usually is around three quarters to one inches and the tallest is usually somewhere between an inch and a quarter and an inch and a half. And those dimensions seem to really uh, make for a good handle that fits most hands. So the other thing I look for in a good handle is there's a curve on the bottom of the handle to accommodate the curve of your fingers when it's in a closed fist. And ideally, you can't always find this, but ideally there's a curve on the top of the handle as well. And that's to accommodate the curve between the thenar and hypothenar eminence when your hand is in a closed grip. When you have a handle that's made like this, it just feels perfect. If you're worried about losing grip and things like that, you can add a little bit of a flare at the back so that the knife doesn't come out this way, and you can add a little bit of a flare at the front as well so that the, your finger doesn't slip onto the blade. That being said, um, I typically don't use knives for stabbing, and so, you know, the, the only way I can envision the knife slipping this way is if I were to stab the blade into something, and that's just not something I do out in the woods. The next thing I would look for is some sort of an oval shape, or at least some thickness, um, side to side on your handle. Again, the reason being, it's a curved surface that, you're ha that the handle is interacting with. There's a curve for the hollow of your palm, and there's a curve when, when your uh, fingers are grasping something. Again, because of the different lengths of the metacarpals and phalanges, it ends up being really complicated geometry, but it's, it's best to have something that kind of fills that hollow out. Remember when I mentioned this knife, uh, it's got good dimensions this way, here it's got good uh, curves, but it doesn't fill your hand up um, because it's a flat-sided handle. And there's, you know, there's certainly roles for that. I I like my Jesse Hemp Hill knife, um, but it's not something that I would be comfortable using all day long. Another thing I don't do is finger grooves. Why? Because. Remember, I showed you, when you make a fist, you cannot spread your fingers. So if you spread your fingers artificially and try to make a fist, your grip is weaker. So I, I cannot think of any reason why you would ever need finger grooves on a blade. Um, they just don't add anything, and the guy who makes the, the handle and shapes it is going to have different fingers than you, and it, it just seems silly, even though I love this Randall. Finally, any texturing on the uh, handle scales needs to be subtle uh, so that 
it doesn't abrade your hand with all day use. Now this is a Bussy Team Gemini Light Brigade. And I actually think they did an excellent job on this handle. Um, it's got pretty much everything I'm looking for. I mean, they did everything right. It's got a curve here, a curve here. It fills up the, the palm. And uh, they even have a little bit of a stop so that your fingers don't go forward. And it's got a stop so your fingers don't go back. On top of that, the handle is visually appealing. I really like it. And I understand that the, the grooving on the handle adds some visual interest. But that's pretty much all it does, or all it should do. If you're having to put a bunch of grooves on your handle because, you know, you can't hold on to it for some reason, maybe you should design a better handle. This is a blacksmithing hammer. And you know what I'm not seeing on there, despite this being a very heavy-duty, hard-use tool? There are no finger grooves, and there's no texturing on the handle. Here's a knife that uh, is relatively inexpensive and uh, a nice fixed blade knife, uh, full tang, and these are obviously different scales than come stock and I've stripped the coating off, but this is a BK-16 and uh, I think they did a really good job with this handle ergonomically wise. It's made by K-Bar and uh, designed by my friend Ethan Becker. This is one of the knives that I chose uh, for an expedition through the Amazon jungle. Not only is the handle comfortable, but the drop point blade shape and overall blade length are really, really handy in the woods. One last knife I want to show you. This is an older knife. It's one of my kitchen knives. It's a Henkel. And ergonomically, the handle on this is about as perfect as I think you can get. So if you ever are in a store and you could get your hands on one of these or one of these uh, Kellums, you